Hi guys, welcome to this channel. I'm in shape. Today we're going to be going over the Hesse A Square Grammar section. I talk a little bit of fast, so if you want to go ahead and slow the video down, set the speed, just have to get, throw that disclaimer out there. Um, so anyway, we're going to be discussing the grammar section, you guys. You know, we want to take notes on this one because this is going to be a very, very, very thorough lesson from the ruler to the tutor. Everything you need to know about the grammar part for the Hesse A Square test. I've taken the Hesse how many times two times in the past both times i've took also the pre-nursing exams called a kaplan and the t's so i feel like the hesley information that's out there is more um i would say that it's more like a blueprint for the rest of the tests that are exams that are out there so you know this information is very vital doesn't matter what test you're taking you can be taking a kaplan or the t's you still need to know this information on those tests so on the hesse a square they don't really ask you questions that are so like blunt like oh explain what a pronoun is it's not like that it's more like find the pronoun where's the possessive pronoun it's like questions like that so that's why it's so important for us to know exactly the parts of speech so if we know them we know how to identify them so let's get started well everybody knows what a noun is a noun is a person place or thing an example of a person would be like a doctor a nurse we all know that a place would be like a hospital a thing would be like air oxygen stuff like that Pronouns. Pronouns are words that replace nouns in a sentence. For example, instead of saying boy, which is the noun, using he. Instead of girl, she. Cat, it. Table, it. Mike, him. For example, let's lose a sentence. Tim was happy. Instead, we can say he was happy. He was singing. Things like that. So there's two different types two types or possessive and personal now possessive has another name we might call it plural because it shows ownership and then there's the personal oops the personal pronouns which is like refers to a personal person a specific person so that's how you differentiate the both like both of those so example of a singular pronoun would be like using the word mine I my things like that and then possessive would be like them their so if you see those words and they be like oh where's the possessive pronoun then you know it'd be like words that it shows possession it shows ownership and then personal pronoun would be like me i my it makes sense right and also it's singular and i is singular it helps me kind of remember it out yeah it helps you too all right, next we have adjective. An adjective is a word or a phrase, a cause, that modifies a pronoun or a noun. Now an example of a adjective would be the chemistry book. Because it's not, it modifies the book. You know, the book is the noun but it modifies it so the chemistry part like if they didn't have that in there then it wouldn't be an adjective okay another example of an adjective would be mm, he is so or he's nice how about that one this is the noun and this is the adjective all right let's go to the verb i think we get the idea a verb is a word phrase or cause that is used to express action or state of being that's being right there so action is the key word i'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with the verbs so an example would be like shay works jane worked doesn't matter what tense it is as long as it shows like action behind it and ken is working i was taught in school that if it had an ing then you already know if it has an ing do you know it's a verb but i don't know if that's like information would be still valid today i guess in a sense it would be so let's move on to an adverb an adverb is a word phrase or cause that modifies a verb 
and an adjective or even sometimes another adverb. And I'm going to give you guys some examples. But one thing I want to keep in mind about the adverbs is that they don't describe nouns. They only describe, like I said, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. That's one thing you got to keep in mind. An example would be like, she ran quickly. He swam well. He swims well. All right, that's an adverb because it modifies the verb. She ran, so the verb is right here, as we talked about earlier, because it shows action, right? That's the verb. <clears throat> it modifies, it changes, or it gives more detail to the actual verb. See, those are verbs. But she ran how quickly? I mean, see, <clears throat> she ran, but what, what are the further details about her running? She ran quickly. That's the adverb, and then, like, he swims well. But this is the verb, and this is how good he swims or how fast or whatever it gives you details and it's usually like located after don't quote me on that but i believe the adverbs are usually quoted like after i mean before the actual uh, verb adjective or or another adverb so a proposition let's move on to that a proposition is a word that shows the relationship of a noun or a pronoun so an example of a proposition would be the nurse Part, that's nursed <laughs> parked her car in the parking or in a parking garage so the actual proposition would be the word in because it, it tells you the relationship of the noun and also the uh, pronoun okay Another example would be he sat on the chair. So can you guess which one is a proposition given the definition? If you're not already if you don't already know, it's on because it talks about the relationship, you know, of the noun or the pronoun it just all right so let's move on conjunction a conjunction is a word that joins words phrases or clauses you know, together examples of conjunctions would be like and but nor neither words like that an injection i hope i'm pronouncing that right but if not, I'm pretty sure somebody will correct me. For injection is a word or phrase that expresses emotions or exclamation. Words like yikes, yeeks, wow. Words like that, you guys. Let me see if I can find one more example of, of uh, that type of. Yeah, I just said all of them. Phew. And then the key word here is that because you like usually when you see wow, it's usually written like wow with an exclamation mark. So yeah, it's just a little something something I thought of. So let's talk about clauses. By the way, that was like the eight different parts of speech. We did noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, adverb, proposition, conjunctions, and injections. So now we're moving on to a whole different section of grammar. Pat yourself on the back if you made it this far. All right, let's talk about clauses. <laughs> clauses is a group of words that has a subject and a predicate, right? So there's two different types of clauses that you guys need to know for this test, independent clause and dependent clause. So an independent clause literally is independent. An example of an independent and dependent clause are as follows. As you can see, guys, it's color coordinated. The professor distributed the examinations as soon as the students were seated. Well, obviously, this sentence right here that's written in green is the independent clause because it can stand alone. If I decided to X this out, literally, I'll be able to because 
this is it's independent it can stand on its own whereas as soon as the seat the students are seated it's dependent because it needs the entire independent sentence to make sense at all or to be grammatically correct all right guys let's talk about sentences there are well if you don't know what a sentence is a sentence is a group of words that express a complete thought everybody knows what that is right if not that's an explanation there are four types of sentences. There's the declarative, which makes a statement. An example would be, I went to school. It's a statement. Then there's interrogative, that acts as a question. Did you pass your HESI exam? And imperative, which makes a command or request. An example would be, could you bring me a water bottle? Something like that. And then the last one we have is exclamatory, which makes an exclamation. You did what? Exclamation mark tells you that it's an exclamatory sentence because it makes the exclam uh, exclamation, which uses the exclamation mark. I hope that makes sense. Let's talk about a subject. A subject is a word, phrase, or clause that names what the sentence is talking about. For example, Jane went to the store. The subject in the sentence Jane went to the store would be Jane because we're talking about Jane. She's the main topic, the main subject. A phrase is a group of two or more words that acts as a single part of a speech in the sentence. And then a predicate is a part of a sentence that uh, the subject does what the subject does or what the subject is doing. Jane went to the store. So the predicate would be basically went to the store because it is a sentence that is telling you exactly what Jane is doing and once again the subject is the main topic of a sentence all right guys so lay versus sly this is definitely on the HESI for sure I've seen it so many times on the on the test so lay is to put something in place lie is to recline or rest easy right and if you're having trouble to understand when do you use lay versus lie? One thing that helped me using the, the lie that you can substitute the word place for lie in a sentence to figure out if it makes sense or not. But if you use this word place instead of lay, then if it makes sense, if it sounds <laughs> grammatically correct, then you can use the word lay. That has helped me tremendously in on the HESI. When I forgot everything else, I remember the fact that I can place I can substitute the word place instead of lay um, in my head, of course, in a sentence to figure out if it makes sense or not. And it really helped me. So let's, let's go ahead and do some examples. I blank the bookstore on book on the table. So like I was telling you guys, I don't wanna confuse you, but you can use the word place. I place the book, I place the book on the table. Does that make sense? Yes. Then that means you can use the word lay. Okay, you don't have to do it that way. It's just something that, that has helped me and maybe could possibly help some of you guys. So I lay the book on the table. Right? The next one is, let's do this one. I blank down to rest. So this sentence is talking about resting and automatically should tell you that. You use lie because you place, I place down to rest wouldn't make sense, right? I lie down to rest kind of, mm. I don't know depending on who you are it might be acceptable but it's not acceptable it's not gr grammatically correct so that doesn't make sense so we got to use the word lie all right she blank the a and p book on the table she placed the a and p book on the table that makes sense so that means we can use the word lie she lie the a and p book on the table yeah makes sense. and she was blank to rest she well, i'm sorry this is not right guys <laughs> it's supposed to be she went she went laid she went lied matter of fact this is this doesn't even make sense let's just cut that part out okay <laughs> don't even know where that sentence came from but anyway i hope you guys get the gist lay versus lie just use the word place if you know what if it's not lie it's got to be if it's not lie it's lay Okay, pretty simple. All right, so let's go and talk about affix versus apex. 
so it's quite a difference <clears throat> and often people often people misunderstand these two words and it's so easy i'm gonna make it so easy for you guys effects is just to influence or change effects is the result of an outcome i don't know what happened to the e here but it's there okay so effects is to influence or change an example of effects would be uh, he affected her mood he affected it doesn't matter what tense it is in guys okay you, i hope you guys get that that just he affected her mood all right so he changed her mood or he influenced her mood so that's one thing that could help you in the hesse effects is a result of an out results are an outcome excuse me an example would be the effects of healthy eating and we all know the effects of healthy eating it gives you a result right a result or an outcome you know so that's how you know which words to use pretty simple so once again effects influence or changing and effects is result or an outcome okay all right guys further versus further i hope i'm being very distinctive and <laughs> explaining it to you but all right further is a measurable distance whereas further is not really measurable it's a figurative distance is of a greater degree for example further would be like dr selen ran further than dr john because you can measure that distance or you have something to compare it to whereas further you can say example what that um a, a example of further would be the suspect had nothing further to say you see how there's something else to measure it to because the suspect had nothing further to say um yeah which versus that okay which is used to introduce nine essential clauses and that is used to introduce essential clauses and some examples would be for let's go let's talk let's talk about which which would be like i'll write it down for you guys an example of that would be my phone which is an iphone isn't working all right now I'll write that other example and i'll explain a little bit further after that so that is this the boy that is in your class is my brother okay let me get another color to help differentiate the two so which you see how which which the word which not which but which is giving some information that's it totally totally irrelevant because it's like non-essential you don't really need to put the information in there but it is in there that's how you use the word which is how you know to use the word which and then that is used to introduce the essential things the things that that make sense right that you should you know mention the boy that is in your class is my brother but if we didn't have that it wouldn't even like make sense it's like you need to know that this boy is my brother i hope that makes sense to you guys <laughs> and if it doesn't make sense just if you know which then you know when to use which and that way you don't need to know how to use that if you know how to use that better then you know how to not use which or you know, i hope that makes sense all right guys now we're going to go to who whom and whose who is used to ask a question who are you who is this who will teach today things like that whom is used to ask which person receives an action whom do you trust whom is to blame to whom this may apply you know we write letters and we like to whom is may concern when we write letters and we don't know who is going to because that person is going to receive the letter 
So think about whom in that aspect. Whose? Whose is used to find out which person something belongs to. You ever hear people say, whose man is this? Whose, whose, <laughs> whose grandma is this? Whose baby is this? Whose cousin is this? And that's the proper word, whose, because you're trying to find out whose this person or this thing belongs to. An example would be, for further examples would be, whose car is this? You know, things like that. Let's go on to further verses. I'm sorry, not further. Fewer versus less. Fewer is the number of things that can be counted or numbered. An example would be, the professor had fewer students in his class this morning and less is refers to the degree or amount that is in bulk or abstract it's also used doing you know math statistics things like that when you hearing math and math terms it's, it's, it's you'll find the word less in there so an example would be it's less than five miles to the store you see how that's kind of abstract yeah all right guys so ie you might see that sometimes when you're reading it means that is it specifies or explains information further that is not i would say not widely known or that's irrelevant it's things that are just giving you more information so an example of using the ie or that is would be i love to study chemistry and you put the IE here and then it's like you give information about chemistry. So chemistry is the science of dealing with the composition of matter, right? So we see how it gave information and it specified what chemistry was. And then we have EG. EG for example, it, it means for example. So instead of like writing example like I did, I should have wrote EG and then put an example, okay? So let's give an example of using EG. Um, I love to study chemistry, e.g. chemistry equations, molecular structure, and molar relationships. It gave an example of the different chapters in, involving chemistry. So I'm going to give you another one just in case you don't understand that. <laughs> For, uh, let's see, I wanted to, she wanted to be a doctor because why because for example i get to help people um i make a decent living and i can further my education so i'm giving you examples i hope that makes sense to you guys of when you use the e eg so just a little quick 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 very very quick explanation of bring versus take and could versus may or might all right let's go and start with bring versus take oh the board moved all right so bring is like you're moving towards the author or the reader um bring me some water that, that's how you know you should use the word bring instead of like take so take would be like you're you're taking something away like take away my pain not bring away my pain so that's pretty much easy i'm pretty sure you guys got that you guys are smart so could slash can versus me slash might when they used both very simple right could is like you're implying your power could is like you're you're like demanding and commanding something and this is something that i actually didn't know the first time i took the test but i maybe solved like a few a few problems what could and may but um could is like you're implying your power you're commanding could you please or could you bring me some water can you shut up things like that <laughs> so let's go to examples of me slash might it's like you're asking permission you're you're asking nice you're kind may you please be quiet may you be quiet or whatever like may you bring me some um, water things like that because you're asking okay so that's pretty simple cliches or expressions or ideas that have lost their original impact over time because of the assets use of them. Examples of cliches would be, busy as a bee, don't touch a book by its cover, what goes up must come down, cold as ice, diamond in the rough, a kid in a candy store, take it easy, take a chill pill, words like that. Euphemisms are mild, indirect, or vague terms that has been substituted for one that has been considered 
harsh, blunt, or offensive. Examples of a euphemism are as follows. Old people, instead of saying old people, you would say senior citizen. Instead of saying a blind person, you would say a visually impaired person. Instead of using the word garbage man or janitor, you would say a sanitizer engineer. Instead of saying he passed up, he died, you would say he passed away instead. So euphemisms are basically words or expressions that are replaced the harsh ones. It's just saying the same thing, but it's just making it look good and making it sound good. It sounds better when you say he passed away instead of he died, right? So that's an example, some examples of euphemism. Sexist language refers to spoken or written styles that do not reflect the presence of women. Anything that says it has a man at the end of it, you can pretty much know for sure that it is considered sexist language. Words like fireman, policeman, mailman. Instead, you would say firefighter, police officer, or mail carrier. All right, guys, so a compound sentence would be two or more independent clauses an example would be the professor thought the test was easy but the professor thought i'm sorry it's supposed to be students the students thought it was too hard and if you take a look at what a run-on sentence is a run-on sentence is two or more complete sentences sentences sorry are written as though they were one sentence the professor thought the test was too easy the students thought it was hard you see how there's no comma no conjunctions nothing to differentiate it it just keeps going on and on and most of the time you'll be able to spot like run on sentences because they won't make no it won't make any sense at all you'd be like what like you know if you read it out loud I see the professor thought the test was too easy, but the students thought it was, see how I had, I had to read? You have to read in between the word. It's probably too long. It's probably a run on sentence. So the professor thought the sentence was too easy. This is one independent clause. And then this is another independent clause. And we already talked about those independent clauses. All right, guys, real quickly, I just want to go over these few phrases or words rather. Here versus here. The here with an A is used for sound. Whatever you can hear through your ear, that's the one with an A. Hence, this is ear. So here, okay? That's how I, I remember in elementary school. So here, the other here is, it means at or in, in, in a place. So here comes the doctor, here comes the nurse. So that's that type of here. Good versus, uh, well, Good usually is before nouns. For example, she smells good, this is a good nurse, things like that. Well is usually an adverb. She's getting well, she's doing well, things like that. Teach versus learn. Teaching is like you're receiving, you're acquiring knowledge. So teaching, I'll say, I don't know if you guys can see that, that's like a plus sign. So just remember, it looks like a T, right? So teach, teaching, you're acquiring, you're getting information. And learn is to give or impart knowledge. So that's one way you can remember. All right, guys, this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video with your friends, your nursing buddies who may benefit from it. Comment down below and let me know if you have already taken your HESI and this video has helped you in some type of way. Like the video if it has helped you, if you got some clarity of things that you didn't understand. For us, the grammar section of the HESI assessment, subscribe to the channel for the other sections that I will be covering. Save this to your playlist. And I have not explained how exactly I passed. There's a few videos out there of me explaining it, I believe, but me saving all the videos that are like these to my youtube channel has helped me so save this video to your hesse a squared assessment playlist and that way you're sure to pass and good luck guys